All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live App Review. Uh, today, um, it is live, and I've got some guests who will be kind of jumping in to ask questions. Um, we are going to take a uh, progressive onboarding example of, of taking a user with no near and turning them into a user with, uh, with their own near to pay for their own transactions, um, while also simultaneously carrying over uh, fung a fungible token balance. So um, basically the, the, the guest user is going to earn fungible tokens as part of the, the smart contract that has a balance of fungible tokens for the guest user. And then they are going to take some of those fungible tokens and return them to that contract in kind of like a sort of like a fake swap, like, a, like, an, like an automatic market making swap they're going to swap the tokens back to the contract in return for actual near to which they will uh, they will create and fund their account. What's missing from this example is a seamless transition inside the app from a user that is a guest user to a user that is a like a full blown wallet user. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to try to make that transition uh, happen without the user having to, to sign into the app uh, after their account is upgraded. So when they're a guest, they're like a virtual account. They're not a real account on the near blockchain. And I'll explain what that means again in just a moment. And then after they're upgraded, they are a real account on the near blockchain. And we just wanna prevent the, we wanna, we wanna fix the step where they have to log in with near wallet and then go back and log in with the app. So. Let's take a look at what the example looks like right now. So we're going to um, sign into this app. And it's going to want to use one of my accounts. So I'm going to choose this MD1 account that I know has a lot of near in it. So we're going to sign in. And remember, we're signing in as a real near wallet user, uh, like a user that actually has near tokens and actually has funds. So I've already bought some wrapped tokens, but I'm going to buy uh, whoops, no, I'm not going to transfer. I'm going to buy a little bit more of these wrap tokens. So what I'm doing is I'm actually sending near tokens to purchase wrapped near tokens as a fungible token. So these fungible tokens are basically just like claims to near. So they're they're one to one uh, fungible tokens. So in Ethereum, this would be the equivalent of wrapped Ethereum, which is basically like an ERC twenty token that represents. Uh, Ethereum, like an actual unit of Ethereum. So now I have 20 tokens in my in my little you know app example. This isn't this isn't you know very pretty, but it gets the it gets the job done. Um, and then I'm gonna sign in as a guest. So now a guest account is like a virtual account. So it's not a real um, it's not a real account on the near blockchain when I make it. And uh, we have some guests on the call, so. I think I'll single, <laughs> I'll single someone out. So uh, Molly, here you go. Uh, you're going to be a guest of this app. So are you excited? Absolutely ecstatic. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, so right now what it's doing is it's actually going from my front end app to a, a Node.js server that I have running. I'll go show that because um, it is you know, live review. So we had some errors. Uh, I don't know what's happening. The, the transaction's retrying. This is testnet, so it might be a little slow. So what it's doing is it's it's trying to create the Molly guest account. Um, it's taking a really long time. Uh, time out, time out, time out. Great for my live demo. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so it's finally done. Um, so we just had some timeout errors, but this is the output from my Node.js server. Um, and this is my currently running you know, front end. So what I did actually was I did two things. Um, I should really bring up my diagram from yesterday. Where is my diagram? Here it is. So what I did was I arrived, I chose a username. I'll make this a little bigger. I arrived, I chose a username. And then all of these steps were hidden, including the step where I called the uh, server and I basically said, "Hey, can you add me to the um, 
can you add me to essentially I get, I get a public key added to a guest account. Don't really worry about that, but basically the get the, the guests account is just an account to manage the keys of guests. And that's a sub account of the app. So it's like guests.app.near or whatever. And then um, I get added as a guest in the smart contract. So let's take a look because you know we should show the technical stuff. I get added to this mapping here. And instead we're not Dorian anymore. I was just sort of illustrating for Dorian like how this worked. This is the uh, public key and this is the account ID. And the account ID is now gonna be um, you know, Molly dot this application name. And of course it's on testnet. This is just a, this is an app name or like a, a near, a near account name. That's just auto generated. So the next thing we're going to do is we're, so we're operating as this account and this account doesn't exist. So I'm just going to prove, prove that right now. And, and we call it like a virtual account because it just exists inside the contract just like a fungible token only exists inside a contract. It doesn't exist at the core protocol yet. Um, so remember like, you know, this is just a, like kind of a, not a fake. It's just a, it's just a virtual account. It's a smart contract based account. So now what Molly is going to do, uh, well, I'm going to do it for, for Molly, <laughs> for the Molly guest account is create a proposal. So that's going to map an account ID to a proposal. The proposals are really simple. This is just sort of like a fake, a fake sort of DAO kind of example where I'm going to make a proposal and someone's going to fund it. And we're also going to store a balance of fungible tokens on behalf of the Mali account. Now, again, the Mali account does not exist outside of the smart contract. So let's go ahead and make a proposal that just says, um, please send me wrapped near tokens. Okay. So please send me some wrap near tokens and the amount that Bali wants is five. So we're going to make the proposal and that is going to add the proposal into the proposals mapping here. So we just have to wait. I, I don't know why it's so sluggish here. It seems to be retrying the transactions. Um, so we wait and wait and wait. And so this, this on its own, let's go to the Explorer. This on its own will definitely not even though Mali has created something on the blockchain, like actually created something in the smart contract, this now actually exists in the contract. Uh, Mali still doesn't exist as a real account yet. Now, remember I signed in as a wallet user. So I signed in as a wallet user with, uh, sorry, with a token balance of 20. So Mali's proposal costs five wrapped near. And, and I have wrapped near as the wallet user. So I'm going to go ahead and fund the proposal. So now I am taking wrapped near inside the smart contract. Remember wrapped near only exists in the context of the smart contract. I am actually transferring from my balance to Mali's balance. And I'm going to approve that. This is just a little security feature that redirects the wallet. I'm going to approve the transfer of those fungible tokens from my account to Molly's account by funding this proposal. So we wait, we think, we think, we think. <laughs> um, it's a little more sluggish today. Oh, it, it looks like it went through. Okay. It's a little more sluggish than it, than it usually is. So then if you look at the guest account, uh, oh, did, did this not happen? Yeah, something bad happened. <laughs> Okay, the transaction didn't go through and for some reason, Molly's proposal was, was deleted. Okay, let's try that one more time. Um, I'm just gonna do, give me some wrap near. And I don't know why the proposal was deleted, but we're having some problems with testnet right now. So I'm gonna fund the proposal. I'm going to approve the transfer of the fungible tokens. Hopefully there's no errors here now. Okay, looks like it was successful. So now this is, oh, and okay. Something happened and my UI didn't update, but Mali's had two proposals funded. Okay, so recapping, there were two proposals funded, but my UI wasn't really telling me this. Uh, or maybe I just wasn't paying attention and I didn't scroll down far enough. We'll have to check the videotape. <laughs> um, the videotape, that shows how old I am. Okay, so let's look at this token balance thing. So. 
So remember, the Molly account is not real. It, it's, a, it's a virtual account. If we go search for it, it's not real yet. What we're going to do here, and this is the point that I want to focus on today, and we're going to do a small tweak to upgrade this experience for the, for the Molly guest user. The Molly guest user is going to sell some wrapped near tokens and create the account for real. And that means it's going to be a real account on the near blockchain. And the rest of the tokens that the Molly account does not sell to fund the creation of her account will actually end up still being credited to this account, this account ID. So you'll see that in just a second to make it all clear. And what we're going to do is we're going to sign out of this app and sign back in as the Molly account and inspect our balance. But what we want to do today is skip that step. So I'm going to show you that in a second. We'll talk about how to fix it. So, so, so basically sell some wrap near tokens, a little bit, and fund my account. So once this is complete, um, then we will go check the Molly account. And it actually has near. It actually has near tokens. But where are the other, you know, we were we had this balance of 10 wrapped near tokens. They should represent near one to one. So where are the rest of the tokens? Well, well, they are here already. So you can already see the balance. And by the way, the app, the application took a small fee of 0 0.1 wrapped near tokens as a fee for sponsoring Molly's uh, Molly's account in the first place. So anyway, it says, congratulations, you have near. So you have real actual near. So you're a real wallet. And this is the step that I want to skip today, where you actually go out of the, uh, whoops, I don't know why I'm doing this myself manually. There's a button there or a link. Um, so you actually can log into this Molly account now in the near wallet. Remember wallet.testnet.near.org. It's a real, real account if testnet is working. <laughs> okay, come on. It's going to do it eventually. Um, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to sign out of this MD1 account. So I'm going to sign out. And now that I'm logged into the Molly account, I can go back to my app. I can sign in where I get redirected to wallet.testnet.near.org and I can choose the Molly account as one of my actual accounts. So I'm going to allow that. Okay. Now, if I go to the wallet, you can see that my, my wrapped near token balance is 9.4 tokens, tokens, not near, not actual near. And my balance of near is 0 0.46. So some near was used for gas and fees and various things. So, so that's it. That's the point in this example where we can stop and we can ask questions and things like that. But before we do, I just want to say that the step that I'm going to change is actually uh, having to log into the wallet. So what I'm going to try to do is when the account is created, I'm going to try to add the access key for the application under the hood so that the Molly user doesn't need to like sign out and sign back in. Well, they would never sign out because they wouldn't have access to the person, the person's wallet that funded them, but they just won't need to go to near wallet, put in their seed phrase, sign into the near wallet, and then sign into the app again. So that's what we're going to fix today. Uh, for right now though, anybody have questions? Um, well, I have a quick question. Okay. So in terms of the fees, uh, the 0 0.1 near, is that all in gas or is there some sort of like, you said there's like a sponsor fee that goes along with that? Ah, uh, there is. Okay. Yeah. And that's like a fixed number. Okay. But, but this is up to the application. This doesn't have to be like a, like a const. It could be, it could be anything. Like it could be, it could be part of the smart contract itself. So it could just be like, you know, pub sponsor fee, um, you know, balance. So some, some amount. And then basically um, if you are the owner of the app, if you're the, you know, you could start, let's say you start with a low fee and you see, you realize, oh, it's, it's not covering all of my costs. So you slowly increase the fee to support the, the new users. Mm -hmm. Make sense? That makes sense. And will the, um, will these sub account holders, do they have, do they have like full control over their own like accounts, like in this application? Like, do they know that their wallet exists on the, uh, 
on the you know on the mainnet or testnet um, once it's actually generated, or is that something that they are made to, um, or just apps supposed to be like made to uh, keep them separate from that in a way? That's a good question. So once they're upgraded to a to a real near account, are they still in full control? Uh, like yes, they are. So the like my intention with this example is mm -hmm. to show is to show that uh, I have a little diagram here. Where is it? Uh, not here. It's here. So my intention with these examples and with these user onboarding flows is to make sure that everybody knows that there is there is a possibility to construct an app where the secret key of the account, so the secret key that basically signs the transactions related to the public key that actually represents the guest account or the real account is always on the user's device. So you can actually build guest accounts, these sort of virtual guest accounts or the, or upgrades to real wallet accounts where the, the secret key is never really, uh, it's never really passed to the application. So you make an interesting point though, Dorian, like I have been creating these key pairs inside the JavaScript of the application itself, which is not very secure when you think about it because the application owner owns that JavaScript. So they could, they could push an update or they could, be, uh, they could be taking away the secret key. What would be even more secure, and we are going to bring this to the near wallet, is if we had a way for a user to go to an extension or go to some other app like the near wallet to create the key and then return to the app with just the public key. So they would return to the app with just this part. And then the app can basically say, uh, you know, oh, okay, that's your public key. That's who you are. I, I guess I'm going to create, you know, dorian.app.near and give this public key the only access to dorian.app.near. And even as a guest virtual account, you would be like that. And even as a full account, you would be like that. So the only person who can control that account is you. And the app, in fact, you can actually, it's kind of cool. You can write smart contracts where the, where the actual owner of the smart contract can't kick you out. Like they, they, can't, they can't take your fungible tokens. They can't do anything. Which is which is really like you know the promise of um, the promise of blockchain and these these sort of like decentralized applications is that users can sign in, they can they can fully own their their assets even if they are uh, just assets that exist inside a smart contract. Mm. Does that help? Yeah, it actually makes sense. And actually, yeah, answered my next question too. Like if the uh, if the master account can like control these like sub accounts. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> thank you. Well, yeah, they, they can only control the sub account in, in so much as that they can control like the naming of it. So um, they could actually, that's a good point. They can actually, um, as you actually, that's a great point. As you are a, a virtual guest account, the, the actual app can, can still create your sub account name. So Basically, they could create your sub account name and then and then launch their own transaction against the contract. And I think that they could. Let me think about that. No, no, actually. Um, I think based based on how the contract is written, they can't uh, they have to look at this get predecessor method. Um, no, they, um, oh no, they control, they control the ability to add keys to guests. Uh, I'm just trying to think really hard here. Can they actually, can they get in? Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if they can get into your guest account after they add you as a guest. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure maybe somebody might be able to do that, but the point is, is that after you upgrade to a full account, there's nothing the application can do to stop you from owning those tokens. So 
there, there's probably a low likelihood that you would sign in as one of these guests or virt virtual accounts and you would basically live inside the app and then immediately somebody would give you a thousand dollars, you know? So probably you would start with like a small value transaction. Like you would maybe sell something for five or 10, you know, wrap near tokens. It's about 25 bucks or something, whatever. And then you would use some of that proceeds to, to quote unquote, secure your account, right? And also, by the way, if the application stole from its guest users, uh, you know, that wouldn't be a very good application. They wouldn't have guests for very long, would they? <laughs> um, but, you know, this is crypto and we, we are, these are very new user onboarding patterns and we're trying to kind of figure this out and we're trying to make it secure. Um, anyway, if there's no more questions. I have a question too, Matt. Yeah. Sorry. I think yeah. mine is shorter and also disclaimer, hashtag not a dem. So it might be a really dumb question that you all. No, know. no, I, I want it. Um, it's better for everyone. <laughs> yeah. So the, the wrapped near versus real near um, difference slightly confused me. Um, so in other words, if I go from having 10 wrapped near in my like limbo account to half a near in my real account, um, is that just like a standard relationship between wrapped near and the wrapped near token and the real near token, but I would never see, it's like, I find it confusing to go from 10 to half. So would I, the guest user, never actually see my wrapped near balance? And that's exactly what we're obscuring out of the process you're building or, um, or is that just kind of like a quirk of needing to understand how wrapped near works? Does that question make sense? Like why? Yeah, did... yeah. So the, um, that's a good question. Um, the half the half near that i that i that i sold so i i i was a guest and then i sold half of a wrapped near to fund uh the creation of the guest account and if you look in the wallet like this is the amount of near that the guest that that the new malik account actually has um so that was an arbitrary choice uh by the app developer so the app developer basically said when the user presses this button and says upgrade account, what actually happens is all of this kind of gobbledygook here. And uh, basically funding amount is just a hard coded value to half of a near token. So okay. that was, a, that was an arbitrary amount. That. But good, good question, Molly. My original implementation of this was to sell all of the wrapped near and mm -hmm. give them 100% give them real near. But the issue there is that when the user logs back into the application to go fund another user's proposal, they would need to go buy wrapped near. So I'm uh, trying to okay. skip these steps. Yeah, yeah. So it's like my wrapped near is sort of my balance for continuing to interact within the application. Exactly. In, okay. in fact, cool. I would rename I would rename it wrapped near for the context of this example and just call it app tokens. You know, right. It's like Perfect. App money. That, that is exactly my question. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay, cool. So um so one I'm thing we wanted to Sorry, go Can ahead. I ask something? Yeah, yeah, it's Vadim. Yeah. Uh, about a uh, first question of Dorian about um, uh, private key on a server. Uh, I believe we can generate them on a client just on JavaScript, store on local storage, and sign every new transaction just with the key from the local storage. So we don't need to store it on a server, right? It, it is actually being done exactly like that, Vadim. Um, ah, really? So sorry. Well, because yeah, you said that we have to. Clear. But the, um, the, the, only, the only time the server is being used is, is to add the access key to one of the contracts uh, to sponsor the user, but the, but the server actually never sees the, the private key. Um, the, the, the private key never leaves the user's local storage. Um, so it's kind of like your yeah, I think it works a lot like your Telegram bot. Let me just quickly find the code for that. If you go to the guest component here, you'll see in the um, adding guest flow, you'll see here at some point, I generate a seed phrase on the user's device. So remember this is client side. And the only thing I actually pass to the server is the public key and, and also the username that they want. So they want, they want this username, you know, Mali dot 
app.near and they pass the public key that should get added that should map to this. And then actually it's a really good thing you asked that question because I can explain how some of this works. This information, if you look carefully, this information maps maps uh, one to one with this guest record here. So that's all we're doing is we're adding the public key and we're pointing to the guest account ID. And we, we don't actually send uh, the private key to the server. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Do you have so I don't see the reason to sign through the near wallets then it will do very similar stuff. If you will generate, if, if key, if server doesn't generate the key, so. Yeah, uh, the only reason why I mentioned that maybe the near wallet or some extension should generate the key is because, is because the, the actual application that the user is sitting on, like the, the JavaScript that is part of, of this application, it could actually be malicious, right? Like it could be, okay. it could be, it could be bad, or or this application could get hacked, right? And if this application was hacked, then the local storage would be compromised. Yeah, get it. Thank you. Uh, the Dean actually brings up a good point about you know using local storage to keep uh, secret keys. The, there is a there is like a a very easy way around this, and that is really really to ask the user for, um, you can ask the user for some password, you know, and I realize this isn't like super fashionable for like the crypto space, but if we're dealing with like low value amounts and we just, we don't trust the developer of the app, you could just ask the user for like some password. And as long as the app originally sort of the, you know, like kind of encrypted the secret key with some sort of you know derivation of the password, some secure kind of derivation of the password. I think that that would maybe increase the level of security. But at this point, it's also kind of like security theater because if the application was hacked, you could just ask the user to type in their password, and they would probably trust you anyways. <laughs> so it's um, you know using third parties and using two-factor authentication methods for high-value crypto accounts and high-value sort of secret keys is probably the best approach. But we don't have to tackle all of that. Like we're we're making, you know, we're making fun applications for fun for fun people. <laughs> um, so let's get back to the example um, because I do want to try to upgrade this. Um, so I showed the upgrade guest account here. Um, and what I did was I took in a new public key that I'd like to upgrade the guest account to. And that actual public key becomes the full access key for the new account. And remember when the, when the, when the guest account or the virtual account was being used, the guest account's uh, key was actually, um, the public key for the guest was actually existing inside a special sort of reserve guest, guest account. And this is not the, the user's account. But, but now we, we are going to actually create the guest's account. So we're gonna create a real account and we're gonna add a full access key, but what do we know about Near when we sign into an application? We need an access key, right? So we need to be able to sign in with an with a access key to an application. So what we're gonna do here is when we call a handle upgrade, what we're gonna do is I'm probably going to generate a, um, this is where it's gonna get really messy. I probably don't wanna use the same, uh, actually, can I use the same full access key as an, as an access key to the app itself? That's a good question. No, I can't, because I can't add the key twice to the same account. So again, just to recap my thought, my thought process here, sorry if I, if I go a little fast or if you wanna ask questions, go ahead. But what we're going to do is once the user account is created, we are going to add an access key. And in order to do that, we need to do a bunch of stuff. And I brought up the docs in advance because I can't memorize all of this stuff <laughs> on my own. So what we need to do is we need to actually do stuff like this. So we need to put in uh, this useful information. So we need to actually have 
a public key that we're going to put in. So we're going to actually make a new, um, oops, a new field here, and we'll we'll take in another. Uh, this base fifty eight public key is just like a JSON friendly public key. So the public key for the access key is going to be called access key. The allowance is going to be. Um, I'm just going to make a new variable here. Uh, look, hang on. I'm going to call it like access key allowance. First, I, so I find it useful to just set up the contract first. So set, set up the contract with everything that we need um, to actually do this first. Um, and then we'll, we'll figure out what's, uh, what's going on after. So the, um, the account ID is the contract that we're calling from. So, um, hang on a sec, we have to figure out who that is. I mean, I know personally that it's the owner ID, but this may change. So actually, I, I totally forget how to do any of this stuff. Um, so we have to go to the NVAR and we have to figure out like which contract we're currently in. Shout it out if you know the answer. <laughs> what is the what is the account when you're in a method in Rust? I know you know this, Vadim. When you're in a method in Rust, what is the environment variable for the contract you're currently in? Is it the current account ID? I'm think it is, right? I'm checking now online. <laughs> I think it is. Um, it's like a we're playing like a Jeopardy game. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. Um, the ID of the account that owns the current contract. Okay. To be honest, I think that's good enough for me. <laughs> so what we're also going to do is we're going to pass a, so method names, this is an interesting one. So I've, I've done this before, but I thoroughly forget how to do this. Um, it is a, it is supposed to be something. Um, if you just give me a moment, I have to think of the contract that this is currently in that would let you do that. Um, which contract creates an access key? This is a really good question. Um, is it the multi-sig contract? I think it is. Let's figure this out together. Um, And it takes in, I'm trying to figure out the, the actual JSON object that it needs to take in, in order to come up with method names. So it says method name string, that's for a function call. That's not for adding an access key. Oh, access key permission, permission, function call permission. This is it. Method names, vector of strings. Okay. But I want to make sure that when you add the access key that we don't have to do any weird stuff with it because I know this is Rust. This is Rust land and it's very unforgiving. So add key. If you have a permission, method names join into bytes. Okay, perfect. So that's it. We got it. So let's take a vector of strings. And so that means we can just send an array of strings to the, uh, to the uh, contract. And then we can do this. We can take uh, method names join into bytes. So here we are adding our access key. Okay. So we have the public key, the access key, the method names, and the rest is the rest is going to be hard coded into the smart contract, like the access key allowance and the current contract ID. So basically from upgrading the guest from the current app contract, we want to add an access key that can only call this current app contract. We're going to give it uh, a public key that we, we're going to provide from the client. And we are also going to add specific method names. So we're going to be scoped to specific method names that we're going to pass from the client. Okay, Vadim, I'm asking you because you're, you're, the, you're the next most skilled Rust person on the call. Does this look okay to you? <laughs> Uh, everything is is good. I only have a question about this last line. Can you just leave method names because it's already a vector? Or do you need to wrap it with this? 
Fancy we one. need to we need to join it and we need to turn it into bytes because the type that it's expecting is bytes, a vector of bytes. So from a vector of string, uh, I'm going to turn it into a vector of bytes. I think actually, wait, Vadim, I think you're right. I don't want to do that in the contract. Well, why? It's just going to waste gas. I can just pass in a string, right? I could just do this. So I'm going to I'm going to pre-join the method names before I send them to the contract. Is that okay? Uh, it's not dot to vec instead of uh, in two bytes. Two vec. But it has to be a vector of bytes, right? So is two vec going to turn it into a vector of uh just a sec. I just gonna... made a call today and I can send you in in chat. That was my function, which is which is which works. Oh, is two vac? No, I, I, I just send you. Which chat? Uh, in the Zoom. Okay, hang on. Uh, chat. Let me see. Okay, so you went from a. It was, but you went from a string literal right like a byte mm -hmm. string literal to back but this is like a string like like a string object i don't know let's see if it works yes let's see uh so i'm calling yarn test i can't see because the video is in my way i'm calling yarn test deploy which should compile my contract and basically um uh i don't know what this means actually no way what Oh, same same name. <laughs> so let's call it methods. Okay, methods. Uh, is it still having trouble? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know what's going on. Sorry, everyone. I I <laughs> I'm spaced out here. I'm not actually putting in arguments. I, I was just replacing the type field of the arguments. Oh boy. Okay. Sorry. This is a really uh, bad, <laughs> embarrassing moment there. Um, Cause I just copied and pasted that from the documentation. So I had like the leftover kind of syntax. Uh, okay. Yeah. So two vec isn't, uh, isn't a method there. I think we have to do as bytes cause it'll turn it into a vec of bytes. And then expected struct vec found, oh yeah, access key needs to go into. So uh, that's because the JSON access key, the JSON typed access key needs to be turned into the, um, the vector of bytes version of a public key. Ah, uh, oh, I didn't like this. Oh yeah, okay, you're right, Vadim. At, at the end, at the end, it was both of us. <laughs> it was as bytes to vec. Okay. Because it was coming from like a string object. Okay, cool. So we're done. So this allows us to add the access key immediately to the guest when they upgrade. Okay. But now we have some client, we have some client side work to be done. So remember what we want to do is once the guest user receives the near and chooses to upgrade their account, we want to instantly log them, like we want to get rid of the guest account and log them in to the app without visiting the near wallet with their own near. So we're going to see that the user experience of this app is just going to be mind blowing. We may go over time. I'm going to stay on because I really want to finish this like on the recording because I'm super excited <laughs> in case you couldn't tell. Um, so we're going we're gonna to finish it no matter what. So right now it's just running my app test, but we can go take a look at the guest um, handling the upgrade here. So the real question is what happens to, um, what happens to a user when they sign in with the app actually? So this, I actually need to do some, um, some investigation into. Um, so local storage, I'm gonna look at some of the keys here. I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of keys here. Um, I hope that, yeah. If I'm on one, two, three, four, then I'm not probably. If I'm on my local host, I'm probably not logged into any mainnet accounts, so that's okay. 
Um, but what I need to do is I need to look into how these accounts are stored um, so that I can actually add a key pair. Actually, I'm wondering if I do need to add it to local storage. Yeah, I should because when near API.js boots up, it's going to want to know that I can actually call this contract. So I might have to do this like a little bit sort of hacky at first, but basically I need to fake, fake the record of the user signing in in local storage. And then I, I may just have to re, like reload the whole, uh, the whole app and just see if I can sort of pretend that a user is signed into their wallet. Um, let's look at the Molly example though, because that's a good sort of case study for this uh, for this particular um, this particular app, and that's the secret key of of Molly. So we're going to store the access key like that. Um, oh, my tests failed. I don't know why. Uh, I'm just going to run the test again, make sure that it worked. Oh, it's the upgrade here. The upgrade failed because it didn't have the right arguments probably. Okay, so we'll have to fix the test first. Um, if you have to drop, by the way, guest people, uh, no worries. Um, I'm just gonna hang on and I'm gonna finish this example and probably talk to myself. Um, <laughs> so at some point in the upgrade, we're gonna need to generate, uh, let's just use generate seed phrase, but we just won't use the seed phrase. And we'll call this, um, we'll call this access secret. And we'll call this um, access public. And I don't even think, do we need access public? Yeah, we do, we do, because we need to add it to the contract. So, and then I'm just gonna put a note here for myself. First, I'm gonna go back and fix those tests. Oops. So app test. So this is the part where Bob gets upgraded to a, uh, Bob gets upgraded to a, oh, it's still running. Um, so, so basically Bob needs to call upgrade account. I have Alice and Bob here for this example. And we need to call uh, with, I'll just expand these arguments here so you can see them a bit better. So public key. And remember, we need to put in an access key. Uh, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna use the access key in the test. So I'm just gonna put in like some I think I'll just put the same in as the public key. So I'll just put the same key. Oh no, you can't add it twice. Okay, sorry. So let's just take another key pair. Um, we'll just call it key pair two and we'll call this public key two and we'll just say key pair two. Okay, so we're adding two public keys and then we're gonna add method names, but we don't care about the method name. So it can just be like this string, it doesn't matter. Um, that should pass the first test, which should pass the second test. So you see two tests failed and that's because the upgrade to Bob failed because we were trying to call the contract method, but the contract method has changed. It has two additional arguments and we just, we didn't have that information. Um, so that's the only change we had to make. Uh, I don't care see where it actually failed. Oh, here we go failed to deserialize input from JSON. You probably like those error messages, don't you, Dorian, Vadim? <laughs> failed to deserialize input from JSON. Okay, so just so you know, just so everybody knows, that's like a blanket. Your, arg your arguments to your contract method call are wrong. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do, do a little bit of translating there. So we should be able to pass that point now because we're giving the contract Remember, we upgraded the contract here. I'm gonna do this as well, just to keep it clean. We added two additional, uh, whoops. We added two additional, holy. We added two additional uh, arguments to the contract. So, um, so we just wanna make sure that that's, that's gonna work. Let's let this go first, and then we'll go back to actually fixing the front end. Come on. Okay, so again, all of this work, all of this, all of this hard work is just to simply avoid the fact that the user right now, after they upgrade their guest account, has to go sign into the Near Wallet and then come back to the app and sign in. So we're just trying to skip that step. And we're skipping that step by directly adding the access key 
as if the user had gone to the near wallet and come back and signed it. So we're just going to add an access key for the user and make it so that they can just skip that step. And then I'm going to do the whole end-to-end -end user flow, and you're going to see how it it's dramatically improved for a uh, specifically for a new crypto user, somebody who's new to near. So they they are going to land. Oh, one failed, six failed. Oh, that's not good. Oh, lots of timeouts. So unfortunately, we got to run that again. But let me explain what, how the UX is going to be really, really great for a new user. They're basically just going to land on the app. They're going to have their access keys uh, sponsored, and then they're going to um, they're going to create something, and they're going to sell it for value, and then they're going to basically um, they're going to. I'm just checking if I have a meeting. I do not. Uh, they're going to sell something as a guest and then they're going to upgrade their account and then they're going to just be immediately in full control of their account. Hmm. So we're running the test. We're running the test. Vadim, are you yeah. excited to join the near team? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, what I want to tell about this, uh, I think probably we will dramatically increase chance for losing seed phrase as well by doing that. Because yeah, the user will probably. just, and later he will write tweets that his password, is, he, 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 does, he didn't control <laughs> what's, what's, what's wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So there, there's definitely, when you make the user experience like more smooth and simple like this, you dramatically increase the chance of users to not understand how, how their account works. <laughs> this is going to be... Interesting. I don't know why the, the tests are taking so long. It's usually not this long. It's, it's a lot of retrying transactions here. But uh, I think I can continue on with the guest stuff. So I'm going to need to make another key access secret, access public. And what we need to do is actually we need to local storage. Actually, I have some, uh, I think I have some convenience methods for local storage. So I have like set, set. So I'm just going to set, um, and then I'm going to actually, I'm going to copy this and just string literal it here. Hey, look. Cool. Success. Okay. So it works. So that means that we can do the front end and then we're done. So. Basically, we're just going to go in here, go into the key store. We know the username, um, I believe. We know the username. Uh, it's somewhere here. Here's the account ID, localkeys.accountid. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this down here after local keys account ID. Okay. So I'm just going to say, um, adding additional access keys so uh, upgraded user doesn't have to sign in with wallet okay so um we get the this piece of information then we want to set this but this part is going to be the username um so uh where is it it's account id okay and now what do we want to set that to? We want to set that to the value of access secret, except I need to double check because I need to do my homework here. Um, is this, I'm actually going to just return out of this right now. I need to know what format that's in. I want to make sure that that's still in the ED, if it's prefixed with ED255919. I think it is. So what I'm going to do is I have to, I have to remove the guest account, make a new guest, this is going to take some time. My image is gone. As you can see, my internet's working perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been having a lot of weird internet hiccups uh, lately. I don't know what's going on. Um, come on. The good news is I can still see you, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, localhost is gone. That's why. Sorry. Um, oh, after the test ran, I need to restart uh, the app. We'll make this before my computer completely explodes. Um, so we'll make a guest account. Uh, no, I have to, for some reason we have to reload. 
remove the guest account. Let's, uh, we're gonna have to sign in eventually. Okay, let me just go back. I wanna just make sure I know what I know what's happening when you upgrade, I know what the secret key is. Um, I'll just go to the MD1 account. Where is it? There it is. This will be really quick because the apps are so fast and usable. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, okay, okay. Just make a guest. Um, come on. That's a cool uh, animation, huh? Made that with CSS myself. <laughs> it, looks, it looks pretty clean, honestly. <laughs> it's not bad, yeah. Um, okay. So make a proposal and one uh, near token, one rep near. Oh, I think I I'm I'm logged into a different contract now, so I have to actually buy wrap near tokens as well. Boy, oh boy. Uh, do, 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 do. Come on, boy. These retry transactions are really annoying. Um, so buy tokens. Add some storage. So this is a brand new contract. So I need to pay. I'm a user with near, so I need to pay for my own storage. That's something we didn't see in the first example because I had already done a a pre pre show with Dorian. <laughs> um, so now I can fund the proposal with wrap near. So one wrap near. And then I, I just really want to see what this access secret is. I could have done this. Couldn't I have done this in like REPL or something? I could, I totally could have done this in the, in the CLI, but whatever we're here now. Um, so let's upgrade the near account. Okay. Perfect. So that's what I need to store. Right. Okay. So we've, made sure that we know that that's what we need to store. Uh, it's good, actually, we're here, we're here. We're already here, so we're ready to upgrade. So let's finish this and make sure that it actually works with the new contract method that should add the access key. So even if the front end doesn't do the super slick, like auto sign in, I will be able to reload the page and I, I think I should be logged into the account. The only other thing we need to worry about is that we're gonna we're gonna have to sign out of any other previous wallet users. So, uh, wait, hold on. Near API key store account default access secret. Yeah, and then we're gonna have to what what is the indicator that you are signed in or signed out of a particular account? Oh, we need to add this. wallet account default confirm true. Do we need to add this? I'm not sure. Vadim, do you know any of this like low level kind of wallet stuff? Like we need to kind of fake the wallet. Um, yeah, I'm looking at my local storage. I don't see, uh, let's try. I, I, I'm kind of sure we will have to reload the page in order to- This is from updated. this is from my app. Uh, this, is, this is my app, but the rest of this is, some random kind of random garbage. The Molly, the Molly key isn't here. So what you can do me, if you want it, to check, you can create uh, on a new port, a uh, new Node.js app, start new app, yeah. and just log in twice and you will see the difference. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Or you can clean local storage here, if you like. Well, I'm in the middle of this, this one, so. <laughs> Okay. I'll just I'll just do it over here. But I like the new port idea. That's a smart that's a smart idea. Okay. So let's see what sort of stuff gets created. Do, 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 do. We should probably know this. We should actually we should have this on a cheat sheet. Hey hey Devrel. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's for sure that what you are doing will work because the first time when I log in into the near wallet on the main net, it was the key where I didn't have any access. It was only private key from the CLI. And I just transferred it to the wallet and made it work. That's cool. So what is, what is this though? We need this, right? We need this because th this is probably the mapping, the mapping to this, right? It's probably the public key for this key. So uh, like 
since you have the private key, you can probably confirm that, right? Can you like regenerate it real quick? Uh, yeah, real quick is the question. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's go here and let's do. Uh, um, Hmm. Ah, but then we need to do this. It's different. Hmm. That's pretty weird. It's a little suspicious, actually. I don't know what this auth key is. Let's see what happens when we sign out and sign back in. What are these auth keys? I don't know. So we've changed the secret key and this auth key is the same, right? Is that the same as before? FGM, let's uh, figure this out. It's, I'm embarrassed that I don't know this, <laughs> but I've never tried to like hijack the wallet before. I just assumed it, it was going to, you know, it was going to handle it for me, but this will be really cool if we can pull this off. So uh, let's, let's just try it after. If it doesn't work, we can, we can end the video and we can, we can come back and try it, try it some other time. FGM. Yeah. Same. Uh, yes. Okay, so we'll just put this in and we'll just try to re refresh the page and see what, <laughs> see what happens. I maybe this default uh, suffix in the end marks the, the current Something. Board. Yeah, uh, well, we'll figure it out. So we'll, we're gonna put that into local storage and um, we are going to add the public key to the contract. So where are we calling upgrade guest? We're calling it here. So um actually let's uh no let's call it access let's let's do this properly let's use all the full names and stuff and then um method names is going to be interesting so this is contract methods change methods dot join and i think we join with a i'm going to go back to the yeah it join with a comma okay so remember, we're sending just this big string of method names to the uh, to the contract. Okay, so upgrade guest. That should be it. Um, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we put the secret in local storage and we send the access public with the method names. I just want to double check this in my config file that that's actually the right list of method names. So contract methods, change methods. Yep, okay. So fingers crossed, um, after this, now, now what do we do after this, after all of this stuff is done? Um, we probably want to remove the local keys for the guest. So we're going to actually, um, we're not going to update the local keys and we don't, uh, do we need the seed phrase for the full access key? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. We don't have to log out the guest user just yet. We just have to sign out the wallet user and then the wallet user should flip over. So there's two people signed in at any given time. There's, there could be the guest user and there could be the wallet user. It's a terrible application, I understand. You'd never have you know, a guest and a wallet user signed in at the same time. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick out the wallet user and I'm gonna try to reload the app and see if we automatically get logged into the um the new user account i wonder if this is going to work i'm really confused if it's going to work or not if it has enough information but we'll see what happens um so how do we sign out of the wallet well i don't have the wallet here um but i'm going to pass in the near wallet instance from app.js to uh to guest so the guest is going to get an instance of the wallet. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I know what, I know what I'm going to do. Sorry. I'm not going to bother with that. So let's uh, go back to the app, make sure we're on the right one. Okay. Let's, let's reset here for a second.
So we have a wallet that's signed in that has nine fungible tokens. We have a guest that earned one fungible token and they're about to upgrade their account. We want to add an access key for this app after they upgrade to a real account. We want them to automatically be signed in as the wallet user, which we don't know is going to happen. We don't know if the UX is going to be perfect, but so first I'm going to sign out as the wallet user. Okay. So refreshing, we still have the guest account signed in. And remember, this is just local storage keys and, and all that stuff. And now if we upgrade the account, we want to be, we want to basically be the wallet user because then we want to continue on with the app as if we were, uh, as if we were a full user. So I hope this kind of makes sense. Uh, I, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> Let's see if it's going to work. It, it's really funny if it doesn't, I'm sure it's probably not. Oh, upgrade. Okay. Please upgrade. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I've never done this before. Um, oh, this is the account that we're using, right? Okay. So let's go look at it on the blockchain. Everyone's probably like, but Matt, it was loading. <laughs> go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, it got funded. Okay. Token balance 0 0.4 wallet, not logged in yet. Okay. No worries. I didn't expect it to automatically magically log in, but we did get the near. Now here's the real test. Actually, did it get the access keys? Yes, it got the access key. So we do know that the actual account has the access key to log in to the contract. The receiver ID is this, which is the contract account. Uh, okay, so we actually did the, the whole part where we added the access key, but the question is why were we not automatically signed in? If we go to local storage and we look for that key, we can see the, I know it's a terrible account. I just hammered something out here. Uh, it's this account. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at, oh, look, wallet active account ID V2. So what if we do, what if we do this? What if we trick it? So let's imagine that our code did this properly. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to set it to be, uh, I'm just going to copy it from here. We're just going to try to hijack the wallet. So we need to know all the steps that we'd have to do to hijack the wallet. Okay. So we set an active account, uh, ID. But we're still, we were signed out anyway. So I don't know if that would work. Nope, still not working. So is there anything else that would trigger the near wallet to automatically load? Uh, which account were we signed in as? MD, we were signed in as MD1, right? Yes. Yeah. Or was it a so, W? Yes. Oh, there's near lib, near lib key store. Testnet default. Uh, that that's basically my login for testnet though. Any other wallet dot account default confirmed wallet dot account MD one testnet default confirmed. I don't know. I don't know if there's any other any so other stuff that I need for the front end. What is it looking for to um? like as a conditional statement to see if it like loads this page or not or this component or not. That is the million dollar question. That's, that's like, what is it? What does it look for? I mean, without, to be honest, like, um, when near API JS loads up and you want to check whether a wallet is signed in or not. So let's go to where we, where we do that on the near side here. So we check, uh mm -hmm. wallet is signed in so let's go look for that so we have to we have to we'd have to keep diving deeper and deeper into this flow right uh -huh. so we'd have to go to you know complete sign in uh which would be here same file okay and then search, um, so search for public key 
all keys, account ID, How does it complete the sign-in with access key? That is really strange. It says it's getting it. It says it's getting it from the URL of the window, but that doesn't seem right to me. I, oh, if this is not signed in, complete sign in. I think I'm in the wrong space. Hold on. Gotta go back to is signed in. Well, that's the only place where that is used. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, let's look at this here. This auth data dot account ID. So what is, how does this get populated? So we need to figure out where auth data account ID gets created or, or like anything that sort of happens with this. I think we'll just go with underscore auth data. Underscore auth data, so wallet account, underscore auth data, this auth data. Oh yeah, it is loading from that all keys array. It needs something here. Oh uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I think, I, think I, I found it. It undefined underscore wallet, underscore all uh, key. I can we have undefined, maybe down, or the, the last one? Uh, and it has the uh, old key in, inside. So try try to put. I can can I send it to your chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send so it th this is a key, and this is a value from just you know, from one of my app. I try to switch account and it's changed the value here. And if I remove it, it's the logout. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Oh, right. Okay. 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 I, I understand what you're saying now, Vadim. You're saying if you're signed in, you have this record, right? But we're signed out, so we don't have it. Like that? Yes. And then the record is it's all it's all a string right like so it's like this but i need to change the account id yes uh oh and i have my really bad account id um can't even remember where it is actually what i thought maybe you can deploy it on a named account on testnet so it will be more beautiful on next presentation <sighs> That's right. I, I should do that. The reason why I just use the dev accounts is because I'm I'm constantly tearing down my smart contracts. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, does it matter, Vadim? Does it matter what this key is, though? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what What does this key have to be? Uh, I think public key of account of uh, application key for that user for this application. Uh, yeah, so, we tried so, that. We tried to see if that it was like that before, but it wasn't. Um, but let's go look at this, uh, and then let's do. Okay. Yes, we'll try with this one. Yeah, because I, I, I guess you you can have multiple keys for the same user for the same application, maybe with different methods or with different. I don't know. But probably your UI will still show login status. My terminal's like stuck now. Hold on. Let's just try it. Um, oops. Ah, oh, always forget. Um, We'll just take this. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. So now, if we were to do all of this ourselves and we were able to say that we signed in this user, 
Look. Wow. <laughs> We're signed in and it's the right user. What? What? <laughs> Vadim, a virtual high five. Yeah. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Try to call something from this account. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, yeah. come on. This is pretty cool now, right? I mean, this is real. So let's do this one more time uh, really, really quickly um, so that we we feel the realness. Um, so we have to set um, this weird uh, undefined blah, 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 um, right? And we set it to some blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm going to call it blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this, I'm going to have to put in like a string literal here because uh, it's all formatted funky. Um, so that's the account ID. So we're just going to put, and then we're going to put all keys and we're just going to put in the access public. Um, Okay, actually, wait a sec. This brings up a really good point. I think I did this wrong. Um, access public, once you, oh no, when you use generate seed phrase, I think the public key you get back is a string based public key. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna print it out anyways, uh, just to make sure. So. I, Sometimes I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit like kind of afraid that, cause look at, remember when I did uh, from key pair for from string, I get a, I get a public key. That's not like a, it's not like a nice public key like this. So I think generate seed phrase does give you a string based public key. So I think it's fine. Anyway, never mind. That's just me worrying too much. Uh, okay. That probably reload the, the, the screen, uh, like a window, location, refresh. We have to refresh, right? Yeah, I'm quite sure. But we actually have to refresh like way, way, way at the end. So yes, let's do yes. this. Yeah. Is it re reload, right? OK. OK. OK, I'm so excited. I have to, we have to try this because it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid of this other app. We have another another instance running. Um, let's close the tabs to the right. We're going to completely save, reload, restart everything, sign out of everybody, all the accounts. Okay. So let's go back and use this as sort of like a like a scratch uh, scratch pad. So do we have to do anything else? No. We should be okay. So login is MD1. I think this wallet already has fungible tokens. So then we make a guest account. Let's make a pretty name. Let's, hey, because, uh, because Vadim helped us, we'll use his, his, uh, his online handle. By the way, do you want to tell us a little bit about Zafadil? What does Zafadil mean? It's a verb in Russian. It's about, you know, if you, if you join something, it's, it's, you can call with this verb. Like you, you, you have joined. You have joined. Yeah, kind of. Okay, so it's like it's like uh, like a group or collective or something or joining, participating. Yeah, it's your what are you doing? Your action. Ah. Okay, so Vadim wants near. So are we going to give Vadim near? Yes, we are. So wrapped near, wrapped near tokens. So let's send Vadim some tokens. Now I hope this guest upgrade works. That would be really, really, really cool, wouldn't it? So now sure. we're we're Vadim the guest. We have the token balance. So now we're clicking a button that essentially just says upgrade my account, and then it's going to sign Vadim in to to be to be a user that pays you know gas fees. So oh oh yeah. That's cool, right? We're Great. signed in and we have fungible tokens. Now, now why is this important? Okay, so let's recap. Vadim never saw the near wallet and Vadim now has uh, near to pay for his own gas and he has 4.4 fungible tokens. Now this is where it gets really cool. By the way, I'm not gonna write this down. So this account is gone, but 
this is where it gets really cool, okay? So now I come in as a completely other user. Remember, we're on, we're on to the next user. The Dean never saw the near wallet. I never saw the near wallet. Uh, I'm another user. And I say, you know, give me wrap near and I can't spell because I'm too excited. Then I make the proposal. <laughs> and then the Dean is already signed in as a real wallet account. Oh, come on, stop retrying. <laughs> Look at this. Come on, testnet. Maybe, does anyone know, did Mintbase like launch on testnet? Is that why it's so, it's so jammed up? Anybody? Anyway, let's finish it. Okay, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sign off the recording. So if I fund this, this is actually going to be pulling, actually, wait, no, it's not. Damn it, we got stuck. Does anybody know where we're stuck? So who knows why this isn't gonna work? Proposal. It's because of the redirect. Guess where it's taking us. So remember when I said Vadim never logged into the near wallet? Yeah. Check it out. It's going to redirect us to wallet.testnet.near. Actually, wait. What's it doing? <laughs> hmm. This is so weird. It's like, it's freaking me uh, out. Do you see you have a, you had a rust error before. Like no proposal. Oh, over here? Oh. Yes. Okay. So propo well, proposal wasn't created. And also we, we do have some weird error here. Uh, oh, no, 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 it's, it's technically thinks it's signed in. Whoa, whoa, it sent the, it sent the wrap near. Huh? Okay, maybe still the net issues. No, 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 it, I, I got, Matt got wrap near. Wait. I think I know what's going on. Um, hang on. Uh, proposals, handle fund proposal. Yeah, the, the really weird thing here is that it's supposed to go get the contract account from the currently logged in user and then ask them to transfer one Yocto near and because I'm not actually, oh, you know what it's using? Key allowance. It's using the full access key to make the transfer, I think. So maybe it found, how would that be possible though? It, the wallet would never be able to find the full access key. I do have to hop up to another meeting. So I will, it's a good video, uh, I'll catch you guys later. No worries. Take, take it easy. And, uh, you know, Vadim, it's probably pretty late. I'm going to stop the recording here, but at some point, at some point something happened, but Matt got funded. It shouldn't have been allowed to send the fungible tokens though. It should have asked the Vadim account to approve the transfer of one Yocto near. But uh, when you log in, you have some small allowance to spend. If you remember it was uh, Berry Club. You can uh, paint a lot of dots before they will ask you to tip. So maybe it can spend this key allowance. It's no, because it's not allowance. It's actually it's actually a deposit. It's like an attached deposit. So you shouldn't be able to do that with an access key. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. But for now, I'm going to also upgrade the mat account because I just want to see if it if it rotates the wallet and kind of kicks the kicks the Vadim user out. I'll uh, I'll play with this example and I'll get back to you on on why this is uh, is or is not going to work, um, but this user's you know got near now and it's we switched to signed in as Matt, and it it's a uh, it's a little jumbly the the state is a little screwed up here, but basically uh, yeah the Matt account worked. So we just don't know what, if we can continue on using the app. Basically, it's a it's less of a problem with with the flow that I, we just solved, which we we'd let the user log in, and it's more of a problem with the app contract itself and whether or not you can transfer fungible tokens without being redirected to the near wallet. 
So anyway, it's um it's something that we'll have to work on. I mean, this was a this was a lot. And thank you for your help, Vadim. I uh, really appreciate it. Without uh, to not log into the wallet, we can just spend um, deposit these virtual tokens. I think this will uh, you you will just click with KL allowance and just spend this virtual token to fund account. We should be able to spend fungible tokens, but the problem is how the standard is designed. Is uh, it's actually designed? Sorry, I I brought up yeah, a yeah. menu here. I have to kill it. How the standard fungible token is designed is that it has a it has a security measure here. When you call uh, FT yeah, transfer, that's... it says assert one Yocto. So um, in my lib here for funding a proposal. Oh, maybe I called this method. It's weird because I have a fund proposal guest, which actually does, it does FT transfer unsafe. Maybe I actually did do this. Uh, I don't know if my front end code even uses this. It doesn't. So I don't know. I don't know that that's probably not possible. Um, so anyway, long story short, <laughs> It should have redirected to the wallet, but um, be, it should have redirected to the wallet because of the um, because of this assert one Yocto. But as we saw in the example, it never redirected to the wallet, and it did in fact fund the proposal. So it did call the it did it did come through here and remove the proposal and actually transfer the one the one token. I don't know how. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out why and get to the bottom of this, but I'm going to stop the recording now. I can hang out for a little bit more.